So we're trying to move everything out of the way over here. I need to put a new fence panel up there. We have one behind the garden box, so that's fine. That can just go in there. And then another thing that we need to do is we have a tarpaulin on the floor and we're basically going to use it to cover the top of the van because it's currently parked underneath quite a big oak tree and the van is already covered in loads of debris and just mess really. So I'm going to jet wash the van, clean it all and then and then cover it with the tarpaulin just over the roof. Um, screw it to the fence, I think, with maybe some hooks and there's eyelets on it, I think. So try and like hold it down. Um, just as like a temporary solution anyway. Right, so this morning we went on a very wet dog walk and all of our clothes are in here drying off with a heater. I think the coats will probably be dry. Well, oh, most of it's dry, you know. Our oh, socks are still a bit wet. It absolutely tipped it down this morning, but we still went to the park and did our morning workout running up and down the rugby pitch. Oh my God, it was raining so much, <laughs> but we had to do it. I think I might leave these clothes outside to dry now because I think it's forecast to be dry for the rest of the day. The rain's actually done a really good job of washing off all the debris and everything off the van. So it should make it a bit easier. Also need to go and get a sponge as well so I can make some soapy water, sponge it all. Well, jet wash, sponge, jet wash, and then I'll do the tarpaulin. So I'm going to pop the roof, one, because it means that when I clean the roof, it will run down rather than just kind of splash everywhere. And also I want to clean around the canvas bit at the top as well. I'm not sure the most efficient way to do this because obviously it's going to be drying as I'm doing it. So I might do like one side at a time, sponging clean and then kind of work my way around rather than jet washing the whole thing and then sponging the whole thing and then jet washing it again. Um, I don't know, that's kind of what I'm thinking anyway, but I suppose as long as it gets clean, it doesn't matter.
the van is officially fully clean once again. Well, mostly clean. Some of the stuff on the bonnet in particular, and I can't really see on the roof because it's black, but I can't get it off entirely. I might have to use some like stronger stuff to get like the tree sap off. I think what it is, is I think that it's basically in the tree, you have loads of aphids and bugs and green fly and insects and loads of that. All the little dots that you get on your car is um, bug poo, basically. I think that the sap falls on the car or the bugs eat the sap or something and put it on the car and then all the dirt sticks to it and it, it just makes a right mess, basically. But because it's tree sap, it's really hard to get off. I think I read somewhere that you can get it off with white spirit. But if we're going to keep it under the tree, we do need to protect it. So I've got a tarpaulin here. This is a 5.5 meters by 3.7 meters or 18 foot by 12 foot tarpaulin. Um, I think it should fit over the van absolutely fine because the van's about five meters long and I guess it's about two, three meters wide, so it should be absolutely fine. What I'm gonna have to do though, is I'm gonna have to screw it to the fence on the left-hand side here. I've got some like hook things that I'm gonna screw into the fence. And then I think this has got eyelets on the corners that I can just basically hook over and then drapes it over the van and tie it down with some string or something on the wheels try and keep it down and then keep the van covered until we need to use it. That's the idea anyway, but I just want to make sure that this has actually got some eyelets. Oh yeah, it's got quite a few. It's got one every two feet, I think. It should work really well. I suppose I should probably have the hook down so I can hook under it so it doesn't blow up and away. But if I have it, but that could still possibly come out. So I've got the tarpaulin over the van. The hooks didn't really work very well because this side was really flappy. So I've had to just like tie it down. But all I've really done is tie string through the, through the eyelets and then wrap them around the wheels down there. And then I'm hoping that, well, it's still gonna be a bit flappy because it's quite loose. But I've just tied a bit around there. I'm a bit worried that the back of the van it's still gonna get really dirty because, I mean, it's right underneath that tree. So it's just gonna get filthy. I definitely need to get a more permanent solution to this because just tying string through a tarpaulin and putting it over the roof isn't really gonna do a lot long-term. I think it'll be fine for now, um, but definitely need to think of a better solution to that. And also it's really annoying when we want to get in and out of it because it's covered up. So yeah, I think it'll be okay for now, but need to figure something a bit more long-term out. There we go. I never quite know what the best angle is to film myself doing the cooking, but this is pretty much the only space I really have. So I'm quite limited, I guess. But for tea this evening, we're having a lovely vegetable lasagna, or lasagna, or lasagna, or whatever you want to call it. It's essentially van pasta just arranged in a slightly different way 
So we'll have pasta sheets instead of just pasta pieces. And then just a load of veg, basically, and cheese. off we go. I'm also going to boil some water to soften up the um, pasta sheets because otherwise they don't tend to cook when they're in the oven. I don't know if it's just the gluten-free ones that do that or whether they all do it but if I just boil some water and then cook them for like five minutes before they go in seems to work out quite well. Oh, so steamy. I think this is still a little bit runny, but half of my pasta sheets are done, so I'll take a few bits off the top. And then I'll get some sheets out of the water. Whoop. I get my cottage cheese and just kind of spread it out a little bit. Once it's in the oven, it will all melt and everything anyway, so just kind of dollop it in. And then the last two. Beautiful. Mozzarella. So now it goes in the oven, middle shelf, 200 centigrade for, I reckon, about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go 23 minutes, and she should be good. That looks so good. Now without burning myself, Portion sizes have never been like my strong point. I always seem to do too much. But we can always save it for tomorrow and reheat it if it's a bit too much, that's fine. Before Becky decided to be vegetarian, we used to have um, lasagna with mince like you normally would. I know a lot of people probably wouldn't have this if it didn't have mince in it. I just think it just tastes better though. I find that with the mince, it just makes it really greasy and I think that's the same with a lot of things really. If you have meat in it, it tends to make it quite fatty and greasy. Whoa, um, red meat. Yeah, red meat, I suppose. Not like chicken or pork or anything, but just having vegetables. Like this is really tasty and I would rather have this over the meat version. And I think it's probably better for you as well. <sighs> I'm full. But that's going to do it for today anyway. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up you did. Make sure you come back in a couple of days for the fencing, the gate, and whatever else we get up to. But until then, have a safe drive. Make sure you stay alive. Don't spill anything. Try not to spill anything anyway. And make sure you have a lovely day. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.